Hey guys, so Heidi here with Successful Fashion Designer, and in this video, I'm gonna give you an overview of using the repeating pattern tool for Illustrator on the iPad. Now, it works kind of similar, but actually pretty different than the desktop version, which I was a little bit surprised that it works so differently. There's definitely some really cool features in the tool that I'm gonna show you that I'm very excited about that are very different than what we see on the desktop version. Um, I'm also going to share my thoughts on the end at the end on whether or not I think you can use the iPad exclusively for creating repeating patterns or you need the desktop version as well. So make sure to watch until the end. Just so you know what tools I'm using, I use a generic pencil. Um, this is about $25 on Amazon. I'll link to it below in the notes. The reason I opted for this, it was re recommended by some members of the Successful Fashion Designer community and it had really great ra ratings on Amazon. The Apple Pencil is about $100 and I'm not a big hand sketcher, meaning I don't anticipate using this tool a lot to enhance my workflow. And so it just didn't seem justified to spend the $100 on the Apple Pencil. That being said, I don't feel comfortable giving a truly honest review on this pencil because I haven't used it enough, nor have I directly compared it to the Apple Pencil. That being said, it does have great reviews and it's working well for me. So if you're on a budget and you really wanna kickstart your work on the iPad with Illustrator, then maybe it's worth checking out. Again, I'll link to it below. Beyond that, I'm using an older version iPad. It is the sixth, sixth generation, 9.7 inch screen, and it works just fine. Now, there are some limitations. It doesn't have the pressure sensitivity option available that some of the newer iPads have. So for illustrative type of artwork, that could be a really big downfall. For me personally right now, it's not a big deal, and it does not warrant jumping up into a more advanced iPad, which as you know, is a very big expense. So those are my tools, and let's dive, dive in to show you the repeating pattern tool for Illustrator on the iPad. Let's dig into creating a repeating pattern in Adobe Illustrator on the iPad. So what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna bring in some inspiration from my photos and I just grabbed this off the internet and we can just have this image in here as we would normally have an image in Illustrator on the desktop as well. And we can either lock it right here or we can come over to our layers panel and lock it that way. I'm just gonna lock it right here. It's faster and easier and I just need it to do some quick tracing for inspiration. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my pencil tool because I think that's gonna be the easiest option for tracing each of these little dots and going through to create the Dalmatian print. I'm going to give myself a fill color of, honestly, it could be anything. We'll choose a nice maybe coral color and from here, I'm going to start drawing these little dots. And I'm just gonna kind of start tracing. Now, a couple things I wanna show you is one, you might not like how that came out. So let's take a look at our settings for our pencil tool. They're down here at the bottom of the toolbar and we've got smoothing option. On the desktop, we see this as fidelity. And so I'm gonna drag this down. If I want more accurate, which is gonna mean it's gonna follow the pencil strokes more accurately and be a little bit more jagged, I'm gonna go lower, smoother, up is gonna be a higher setting and be less anchor points. So let's maybe try somewhere in the middle and let's go ahead and delete this one. So we'll see, cause I wanna have, I want these to have a little bit of a textural feel on the edges. So we'll kind of come through I think that that looks a little bit better. I like how we get that sort of jagged edge. So I'm just gonna simply go through and draw all of these and I'll speed up for this part because you don't need to see me do this for 10 minutes. Okay, I think that's enough to do the demonstration for the repeating pattern. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unlock the pattern just or the, the image that we were tracing on just to be able to move this over. And I just click that little lock icon in the upper left and I'll move this off of the artboard. And now I'm gonna take my motifs. I'm gonna come over to the pattern tool on the right here. Now in a previous video, I showed you the radial repeat, which essentially takes, uh, and we'll just do a quick little demo for that because I think it's worth just going through these really quickly. We have radial, right? So we can repeat something on a circle. 
We can choose how far around the circle we want it to repeat. We can, whoops, also choose how many objects we want to repeat around the circle. So that's pretty cool. We also have the option for mirror. So if I have something selected, I'm gonna duplicate that, pull that over here, and let's make this a little bit more interesting for mirroring. Okay, so it's very cool. It's a dynamic feature, meaning as I adjust this, the mirror updates. I can change the angle of the mirror. I can rotate this. Again, I can adjust this. I can draw inside the mirror, draw something new inside the mirror, and that gets mirrored. Very, very, very cool, powerful stuff. Um, but for this video, so I want to just give you a little tour of those two while, real quickly while we're here. But for this video, I want to do the grid repeat, which is how we would create a repeating pattern for fashion. So I'm going to choose grid, and you'll see very quickly what happens is it gives me the repeat. It just throws it out there on the artboard, which is brilliant and beautiful. Um, it works, in my opinion, fairly differently than the pattern tool on the desktop version. So it took me a little bit of getting used to, and I'm still kind of fumbling in some spots. But the gist of it is we've got these slider bars here which expose more of the repeat or hide it. We can move this around like an object in its entirety. We can scale it. And we've got these two little bubbles on either side. What those do is allow us to change the size of the repeat tile or to just move the repeat positioning, again, vertically so on and so forth. So that's pretty cool. Um, so let's come in here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double tap and what I can do is I can then edit the artwork inside of the repeat and I get a live update as I go. So let's say I wanna have a couple different colors of spots in my prints. I can do that and you'll notice it automatically updates all around the artwork, uh, all around the repeat artwork, which is so, so nice. Let's say I wanna duplicate that object, whoops. This is where I'm stumbling a little bit with making sure I'm still actively editing the pattern versus getting out of it and then I'm just playing with the whole repeat itself. So I'm sure there's some tricks and I'm just learning them as I go. But let's go ahead and duplicate another one because what I'm trying to do here is just fill this in. This is another thing I'm unsure of. It automatically pushes the bounds of the repeat as soon as that motif sort of starts hitting the edge, which I wonder if there's a setting for that. I haven't discovered or seen anything for that yet. Um, but all things that we will learn in time. In the meantime, I'm doing what I know how to do, and I am learning a few tricks about this. So for example, that that one, just push that open, that's fine. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back and squeeze my repeat closer together. And I think I'm gonna rotate that so it's not so identical. And so now, and I still have got some fill in to do, but let's just, right? So I can then come back and squeeze, even though while I was editing, it pushed it apart. And I wanna bring this up a little bit more. Okay, so now that's actually not looking too bad. We got a little crowded in here. So all I'm gonna do is come in and edit this. The cool thing too about this feature is that I don't have to edit within that individual repeat tile. I can come over here and I can edit any one of these. Now, whoops, uh, you can double click also to get access to the direct selection tool. I don't want that. Um, so you can see it's showing me where the repeat tile is with this blue bounding box here, but it's not, and if I edit within here, it'll update across the whole pattern, but unlike in the desktop version, it doesn't lock me to one specific repeat tile that I can edit. I'm actually gonna edit one where I can see the whole tile. So let's come over here. All right, here we go. So now we've got our tile here. And as I said, I think that part of this just, whoops, Part of this just got a little bit squished. So I might need to bring that in and then adjust that pattern. Excuse me, adjust. Um, ah, it's right here. I was trying to move that one and I couldn't tell. 
It's that one. See, I was trying to move that one, and that's the one I have to move. Okay, again, so I'm still learning this, you guys, but it's fun. And we get to play around. And I want to move this little guy. All right, so you can spend some more time getting it dialed in. And then as I mentioned before, I think I wanted to adjust the repeat bounds a little bit. There we go. So it's not amazing. I see some awkward spots in the repeat, but the cool thing is, is that, right, we've got this as this tile and we can just expose it. Now, one of the differences with the app version versus the desktop version is how you actually use the repeat. So right now we have it and it's just this artwork here. Um, if we come into our colors, it's not an actual swatch. And right now we do not have the ability to turn it into an actual swatch. It sort of lives as an a, a live dynamic repeat on the artboard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this over to the side and let's say, I'm not gonna draw a fashion flat because that would take too much time, but let's say we've got, um, and you know what, we'll just actually do something super basic here. I'm gonna grab my direct selection tool. We're just making a quick skirt, right? So if I want to apply the pattern to the skirt, what I have to do is I have to do it as a clipping mask. So that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select both of these. We're pretending this is my skirt fashion flat. And I'm gonna come over to object, make clipping mask. And so what that does is it uses the skirt to mask the repeat pattern inside of it. From here, we do still have the ability to change the size of the pattern. So that's cool change the positioning, change the, all the things we can change in the pattern that we were able to change uh, before. If we wanna make it really small and we've lost enough of the pattern, right? We just use these slider bars to expose more. So it is still quite robust and the way that it works doesn't really look quite like the Dalmatian print inspiration, but I didn't wanna spend forever fussing with the pattern, instead just showing you how to actually use the tool. Um, so I think there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do in terms of artistic work. If you're much more comfortable working with the pen and this is a great interface for you to design and draw, then I think you can have a lot of fun with the repeats, then bringing them into the Illustrator desktop version and using them to actually fill your fashion flats. Because as it stands right now, I don't love the clipping mask and I think it's a bit more cumbersome some of a way to work than bringing it into the desktop version and using the ability to turn it into a pattern swatch and fill your fashion flat that way. All right, so what did you guys think of that? I think personally, it's a very powerful tool. I love some of the features where you can just sort of drag to expose more of the pattern on the horizontal or the vertical. And I think it's a really powerful feature to play around with as far as just sketching out and getting some repeats done very, very quickly. It works really differently than the desktop version, as I mentioned earlier, but I think has its own pros and cons as far as a robust tool for the iPad. Um, all things said and done, I don't think that it can quite replace the desktop version of the patterns specifically right now because they don't on the iPad, they don't have the ability yet to turn it into a pattern swatch and fill a garment, fill a fashion flat or fill an object with the pattern. You have to create a clipping mask and it come, becomes a little bit just clunky and cumbersome. Um, but as far as creating the pattern artwork itself, you know, I'm still fumbling through and learning some of the nuances of the tools, but I think it's pretty robust for getting your ideas out on paper and sketching and then maybe bringing that artwork into the desktop version to fill your fashion flats. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube to check out all my other videos that I release on Illustrator on the iPad, the desktop, as well as tips to help you get ahead in the fashion industry. If you haven't yet, also make sure to sign up for my email list at SuccessfulFashionDesigner.com where I share tons of tips, tutorials, and freebies that you don't see here on YouTube.